Hello, and welcome to another great, amazing book show. Clorinda Takes Flight by Robert Kinnerk, illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Clorinda the cow took the sun now and then in the back of a friend's house, the farmhand named Len. When a swallow swooped by, though she leaped up to follow, she raced past the barn, out the gate, down a hollow. Oh, to fly, what delight, what a treat, what a thrill, she cried as she reached the tip top of a hill. Goodbye, graceful swallow, how sweetly you soar. I've never, not once in my life, soared before. But I want to be free, like you birds in that sky. And I promise you now that I will learn to fly. Clorinda ran straight to her friend, the pig, Hop. She said, I must fly, but the pig told her, stop. We all want to fly, it's a dream we all share. But please, my good friend, a cow in the air? You haven't got feathers, Clorinda, nor wings, and to fly, I assure you, requires such things. Clorinda's eyes brightened. She said, please explain why a cow isn't able to fly her own plane. What plane? asked the pig. He was clearly not thrilled, but the cow very cheerfully said, one will build. She danced to her truck with her face all aglow. So happy the pig couldn't bear to say no. I knew I could count on you, Hop, said the cow. And Lenny will help us. I'm sure he'll know how to cope with a problem if one should arise like you, my good friend. Lenny's kind and he's wise. They drove to the dump and found boxes and cases that they thought they could use for the struts and the braces. The wheels that they needed, they couldn't find cheap. So they borrowed a pair off Lenny's old Jeep. How nice of him. To cover the wings and the long fuselage, that's that's the middle part of the plane that you actually sit in. It's called a fuselage. I think that's a French word. Uh, not that the French invented planes, but the first plane the Wright brothers made didn't have a fuselage, so maybe they invented fuselages. Anyway, to cover the wings and the long fuselage, they stripped the tin roof off of Lenny's garage. The motor they got from Len's washing machine after first making sure all his laundry was clean. And finally, the friends, with some turns on a screw, got the prop fastened on. And with that, they were through. Len, Hop, and the cow made a very good team. The guys kept her working, and she helped them dream. Time for the test flight. Let's put on our goggles, Clorinda declared as Hop wiggled the toggles. Toggles are switches. Clorinda declared as Hop wiggled the toggles. Len cranked the engine. It gave a loud cough. <coughs> they roared through the garden and then they took off. Oh, look at the pumpkins. Hooray, cried the cow as they flew through the skies. Her co-pilot whimpered and covered his eyes. For the wings had come loose, and so had the rudder. The plane gave a wheeze, and it started to shudder. Downward they plunged, but by some lucky stroke, the plane came to rest at the top of an oak. Poor Hop, he was gasping and clutching his heart. Clorinda, he said, I believe from the start, your dream was delightful, but slightly unsound. And that creatures like us ought to stay on the ground. Clorinda said sadly, I guess that is true. Flight is a thing that a cow cannot do. Here comes Len with his ladder. And yet, observed Len, as he helped them descend, your plane did take off, so I'd say as your friend, your goal was achieved. You guys did it. You flew. Well, murmured Hop, I suppose that is true. Clorinda cried, bravo, hip hop, hooray. With the pig's help and lens, she was well on her way to planning the next flight and then several more. What helpers, she said, this is what friends are for. They constructed a rocket. The rocket went, but that didn't matter. The friends wouldn't quit. A copter, they cried. They all worked nonstop. It went up with a roar and came down with a... Flop. Oh, Len's boat with a washing machine on it didn't work very well. Then over the barn rose a glorious moon. It was round, it was full, it was like a balloon. A balloon, the cow shouted. That's perfect. Oh, wow. 
Yes, cried the pig. Let's get started right now. There on the wash line are clothes of all sorts. We can make our balloon out of socks, sheets, and shorts. A balloon, observed Len. As you may be aware, in order to rise, we'll need lots of hot air. With glasses and mirrors, the air could be heated. They worked until dawn when the job was completed. The magnified light Len supplied did the trick. The balloon filled with air, and Clorinda said, Quick! Into the basket! She clambered aboard. Hop squeezed in behind her, and upward they soared! Where's Where's Len? Len? They both said as they rose in the sky. Len was still on the ground. He was waving goodbye, for in all their haste about what they would do, they'd forgotten to wait until he'd climbed in too. Through cloud banks and rainbows, past ravens and cranes, they flew over mountains and rivers and plains. Their hearts swelled with joy in the wide, immense sky. Oh, hop, Clarinda sighed. That's lovely to fly. Look at those birds. Wow. New York and the ocean both sped by, and they heard the rich chimes of the famous Big Ben. The Big Ben of England, in the crowds down below. People yelled, splendid and jolly good show. They heard drums, fifes, and trumpets, and bagpiping men. Clorinda said sadly, we should have brought Len. This concert is something he'd love to attend. It's great fun for us, but I do miss our friend. As for Len, in his dreams, he had never foreseen that his friends would appear on the news with the Queen. The Queen told them, Bravo! Never before have a cow and a pig ballooned to our shore. So kneel, noble heroes, while we with our sword grant you both knighthood. Now name your reward. The cow thought and thought, and the pig scratched his head. They whispered a moment. Then both of them said, Our helper was Len, and how happy he'd be if we could bring back to him some of your tea. How kind, said the queen, that you've thought of your friend. As for me, I must say I'm delighted to send through you to this Lenny the very same tea he'd get if he came for a chit-chat with me. With that, they said thanks for the lengthening shade, warned both of the friends that the day would soon fade. Her Majesty's staff helped them load and untie, and cheered as they watched the balloon climb the sky. Yay! We love you! Ha-ha! Heading west, ever west, over seas laced with foam, they caught sight at last of their own farmland home. There, Len, with a welcoming cheer, lent a hand and helped them touch down on the best place to land. They gave Len a hug, then the cow, with a grin, presented the tea in its decorative tin. And they promised their friend that the next time they flew, they'd take him along so he'd meet the queen too. And under the stars, in the moon's silver beams, They talked of adventures, of friendship, and dreams. The End That was Florinda Takes Flight by Robert Kinnerk, illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. We do hope you've enjoyed this great, amazing book show, and if you'd like to listen to further titles, please contact your local library. Or subscribe and continue to enjoy more of these fascinating stories.